AGL today has two key strategic imperatives. One, to operate in a carbon-constrained future. And two, to build advocacy and become a more customer-centric business as we seek to harness insights and enrich our customers' energy experience. These imperatives drive three key objectives. To transition from being a mass retailer to a personalized retailer, from being an operator of large assets to an orchestrator of both large and small assets, and from coal-fired power to lower emissions technology. These objectives are driving AGL strategy and decision-making as we think about multi-decade transition in the energy sector. Some aspects of this transition are certain, and our current business model and asset base have an enduring role to play. Other things are less certain because we're operating in a world in which factors such as government policy, consumer take up of new technologies, and the outlook for energy demand are uncertain. That's why we're embedding scenario planning and uncertainty analysis into our strategic planning processes to ensure we're flexible and responsive to change as it unfolds. We've already made a number of key decisions that demonstrate our commitment to delivering our strategic imperatives. These decisions include investing in renewable energy and digital transformation, and setting a time frame for the closure of our coal-fired power stations. And one thing we know is that the AGL business today is in robust shape, benefiting from a competitive advantage built upon our strong asset base and diverse customer portfolio. This puts us in a great position to invest in the competitive advantage of tomorrow, knowing we have the best possible foundation from which to address change. Supporting us through this change is our strong financial position and disciplined approach to managing capital. This is a key AGL advantage today, and it will remain a key AGL advantage into the future. That's why we've initiated steps to ensure we're as financially ready as we can be committing to at least $1 billion of asset sales, to capital expenditure efficiencies, and to $117 million of operating expenditure reductions. And as we think about how to allocate capital for growth, we're making choices that will help us manage risk and provide value to shareholders as we go. For example, we've made several technology-led investments that can help us serve customers better. These include Sunverge, the software that is enabling our development of the world's largest virtual power plant in South Australia, and now Energy Impact Partners. Our $300 million digital transformation program will radically improve the way we interact with customers and drive operating efficiency. A $200 million equity commitment to the Powering Australian Renewables Fund is driving investment in low emissions generation technology and we're entering the Western Australian retail market as it transitions to greater levels of competition. As we assess these and other growth opportunities, we have demonstrated that we'll return more funds to shareholders where appropriate. We've introduced an increase to our dividend payout ratio to 75%, and we're undertaking an on-market buyback of up to 5% of our issued share capital. It's an exciting time for AGL and for our industry. We're clear about where we need to go long term and we know we're well positioned to create value both today and over time as transition occurs and we invest in growth. It's an exciting time for AGL and this is just the start of the story.